are further leaning into your ability to create your ideal reality. You are using the feedback of the frequencies coming back to you, which you are either receiving as harmonized or not harmonized. And you are saying, what can I do to harmonize this situation? Welcome to Activations with JJ Ascension Message. In today's episode, we'll be discussing how to best integrate all of those beautiful Lionsgate portal energies, as well as supporting ourselves through the shifting of timelines that came as a result of the galactic convergence. These are some really fun topics to explore, and I can't wait to dive in, so let's get going. Greetings, Yetodoku Shinarakti Aya Suumiaya Shuoku Yanaya. I invite you to take a nice deep breath as we create this little space together and also want to express my gratitude to you. Whether you are new or you have been around for a while, welcome to this little corner of the podcasting world. It is an incredible time to be alive. That sounds very trite, but honestly, it feels like it is. I know that so many of you felt all of the shifting that happened during the Lionsgate portal. And it's really funny because early on in my spiritual journey, I honestly got very fed up with all of the portals. I was like, what is it with all of these portals? Like, who cares? You know, 8 8. 11, 11, you know, all of this kind of thing. And as time has gone by, I have realized the potency of these portals, but it's only dependent upon your intention. So I can safely assume that if you're listening to this podcast, you did put weight on what was happening during the Lionsgate portal. And we chose as a collective to do that. We chose in many different ways. There were several channelers and spiritual teachers who were putting out information around what the lion's gate could mean for you and it really created sort of a buffet and as always you have the choice on how to sort of create your reality according to those you can pick and choose what resonates with you now if you've been listening to me for a while one of the big themes that was coming through even, you know, three, four months before the portal, because we were preparing for our Mount Shasta conference, was the idea of galactic convergence. And I actually want to remove the word galactic, because essentially what we were dealing with was convergence in and of itself at every level and layer of creation, specifically as it pertains to the ascension of our collective in the ascension of Gaia. Now I'm hopping on this podcast today because I feel like I'm a little more adequately prepared to share with you some reflections from the Mount Shasta experience that we had, as well as help you best navigate these, I would say, next two to three weeks. There's a lot going on. We are still settling into these new frequencies. I don't even love calling them new frequencies. It's really an awareness of all of these frequencies. They've always been there. They're not new. It's just that we're awakening. The veils are being removed. The convergence, the convergence, the coming together of timelines, of layers of our quantum field, of parts of our DNA, was all the highlight of this particular Lionsgate portal. And while we were in Shasta, it was illustrated so beautifully for us. In fact, I don't know how many of you had a chance to listen to the 8-8 portal message that I brought through, which included uh, some, some, basically some reflections from White Buffalo Calf Woman around co-creating and collaborating with different people and different frequencies. And it was awesome because I feel like it was literally supporting the conference for one and just any co-creation that we decide to undergo 
over this next several months. And if it's not already obvious, we are being invited to continue to lean into collaboration, working with others, gathering with others. In Mount Shasta, we had the opportunity to see that in action as many people from all over the world and different walks of life. And we actually landed at about 88 average. Now, the conference kind of fluctuated because in any on any given moment, at any given moment, there could have been, you know, anywhere between X amount and X amount. But honestly, the average was 88. And that was partially just because of the fact that we had ended up renting this room, this space, and it could fit, you know, they said like 100 people. And myself and my friend Queenie, who put the conference on, we were like, well, that's a lot. Like, we don't want to have it full. So we we're like, let's land around 80. But it ended up honestly being 88 by the time all was said and done, which was kind of a fun confirmation. But all these people with many different backgrounds were called together. And I can't remember if I mentioned it here on my podcast or in a comment I made somewhere else. But I ended up reading about an event that was being held in Glastonbury at the same time as ours during the 8 8 portal. And the people who were hosting that event used the word galactic royalty. And I know there's a lot of programming around the word royalty, so you don't have to see it that way. But in my mind, it's different types of essentially DNA. And in a few of the messages that I've tapped into, tuned into, brought through over the last three to four weeks, it has become abundantly clear that Earth was this grand experiment, this combination of energies of different star beings and frequencies and essentially DNA that was intended to to create and facilitate this coming forward of of a higher frequency of of essentially a, a shift into unity consciousness in a way that hadn't really been done like this before. And as I'm saying this to you, I am actually calling in any more clarity on that because it feels very potent to reflect on that. One, I feel quite a bit of validation from our guides that navigating this earth experience from the beginning of the creation of Gaia and her contract to allow many different star beings and DNA to converge on her was, was such almost like a new thing. It does feel like an experiment. I keep hearing that in my mind. They're like, oh, this was a grand experiment. This was a great experiment. And we all thought this would be a great adventure. (laughs) Now, looking at the history of the planet, it doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always feel so light and fun, which I know. But if we take the position of being an observer we can then release the judgment and see it for what it is, see the experience for what it is and how it is facilitating growth for all of us on an individual and collective level. Now, I don't want to talk about all of these high-level concepts without it meaning something for you in your everyday life. You've heard me talk about this before, why are we even doing all of this quote unquote spirituality stuff if it doesn't improve our lives in the here and now as a human being, in our everyday interactions, in the reality that we're creating for ourselves? And let me tell you, many, many, many people are experiencing a huge timeline shifts since the 8-8 portal. And if that is not clear to you yet, I would invite you, if, if you feel called, to potentially drop in, maybe write down, journal, if you are feeling that might be the case for you and how that looks and what it means for you 
personally. What does it mean if you are, if you have shifted timelines? For some of you, I know it's very, very clear. You might have had a, a large, a, a huge event happen. Um, a relationship ended or began. You might have had the invitation to like release a job or start a new job or step into something different, maybe move. That's a huge thing on my mind right now as I feel our guides coming forward to say, JJ, would you help others and support them through relocating, literally changing where they live? It's it's going to come forward. I actually have like this almost like a course coming into my mind because I've done it so many times. I've done it so many times, all the way from step one of like manifesting the means to be able to relocate and and making it having it make sense financially, all the way to like the energetic part of it, the energetic and how it's all intertwined. This is all about relocating. So you may have that in your field right now as I'm speaking to you. You might have gotten a ping over the Lionsgate portal that it's time to shift where you live. Mine happened right before the Lionsgate portal, and I knew that that was part of this new timeline. Now, since then, I've already shifted timelines, I think like two times. And it's hard to even say it in a linear way because when I say that, I know some of you are like, well, can you even, no, you can't really. But for my conscious mind and for that part of me that's still here, you know, human, it's like it feels like there's been two very significant shifts where I can really feel uh, things around me are new. You guys know I've talked about this lots of times in different podcasts, but like, what are the signs you've shifted timelines? Well, you're going down the same street you've gone down before and all of a sudden you notice different things. You you maybe have different numbers showing up for you on clocks, different license plate numbers showing up for you that you haven't had before. So for a while, you might have like numbers like 1111 show up and then all of a sudden it's like 404, 707, 606. And you might have numbers like that showing up for you. So the numbers are sending you, they're reflecting back to you the new frequency that you're in is what I'm hearing right now from our guides, which I kind of already knew, but they're trying to articulate it in a little bit better way for me. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, can so Sunday at ut 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 in an atata to 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 Let's talk about inside of us because I did want to address this quantum integration that's going on. As above, so below quantum integration happening your physical body and all the parts of you all the layers of you non-physical and physical and it's specifically the quantum field of your soul and your essence are also going through convergence and still integrating all of that as i was reflecting and sort of sitting with the collective energies. I remembered, of course, one of the themes for the August monthly energy update was quantum embodiment. And I felt drawn to support as many of you as I possibly could, even in just a little way, through this, by doing a few things. One, I just like to recommend some things that you can do. Two, I have a couple of offerings that I will bring forward and let you know about, but movement is key. And whereas before the Lionsgate portal, I felt like a lot of cardio was needed, getting that heart rate up, more masculine, you could say, load-bearing, you know, weight-bearing exercises. Right now, and this is something you need to reflect on, you need to decide for yourself, don't just take my word for it, but I feel movement but a little more gentle feminine movement flow is needed at this time. Stretching, walks, just going on walks, observing nature is always so, so helpful. Paying attention to your surroundings. And what I'm hearing is practicing the art of being present while you are doing whatever embodiment practice you do. Because you know, that sometimes you go for a walk or a run and you come back and you don't even remember the walk or the run because your mind was going 2,000 miles an hour. And I'm raising my hand right now because that's me. <laughs> that's 100% me. I will go who knows where. So they're saying, do the movement. 
do the gentle movement, the flow, maybe yin yoga, stretches, simple walks down the block. But don't do it without being present. I'm also hearing swimming. They're like, don't forget water. Swimming. Swimming. Going somewhere where you can get immerse yourself in water. Utilizing water to support this time of integration of these new frequencies with the end result of fully anchoring into your quote unquote new timeline or new frequency, new frequencies or new awareness of frequencies. English is so hard sometimes, friends. <laughs> I'll say things and they're like, well, that's not totally accurate. I sort of have to, I sort of have to say, okay, guys, listen, I'm doing the best I can. Okay. English is hard sometimes. So I'll, I'll pepper this. I pepper all my podcasts now with light language. So yinakatoku iyamana haya. Yanakatoko iyanamahaya. Yanakatoko iyamanahaya. Just receiving that for yourself. So that is the quantum, essentially quantum integration support tasks that you can do <laughs> over the next two to three weeks. Now, I did mention I will be offering a couple of things on the 31st of August, which is the last Saturday in August. I was called to simply do a 90 minute session for a group. And this session is focusing on quantum integration. So we will be utilizing a guided journey and light language to support you through finalizing some of this integration that you are going through. As you step into next month, you'll be able to really have that anchored in and move forward with trust and confidence. You can also do this on your own through light language. And that's why light language was another theme and an ongoing theme. <laughs> I have my two light language courses coming out in September. So light language is huge. I also felt it would be in alignment to spend a couple of days dedicated to as many one-on-one -on -one sessions as I could. These are 30-minute sessions I'll be doing because I've learned the power of a 30-minute session especially when you're utilizing light language. And so I do have a limited number of 30-minute sessions that I'll be doing after the workshop, and everyone who signs up for a session will receive access to the workshop. So all of the links to that are in the description to the podcast down below. But this is just how my little contribution, my little contribution on that. So other shifting going on with regards to these timelines I'd like to just tune in and do call in and I'm pausing. You guys are noticing that I'm pausing a little bit more in the podcast. <sighs> We're shifting gears and I just feel our guides, our higher selves coming forward to offer additional counsel, advice, words of support, love and validation. <laughs> <sighs> Sovereignty and choice is key in your shifting. And when you are feeling something is out of alignment or discordant, you have the power to shift that into a harmonized experience rather than seeing it and walking away from it. Because it's not going to work. You are further leaning into your ability to create your ideal reality. Instead of using feedback to make a split decision, you are using the feedback of the frequencies coming back to you, which you are either receiving as harmonized or not harmonized, and you are saying, what can I do to harmonize this situation? Because I desire for this situation to be perpetuated for one reason or another. There's not a locked in outcome when you receive feedback. Receiving feedback that something isn't harmonized does not mean you need to immediately release that or sever the contract, you might say. Take your time. 
We invite you to be less impulsive, especially when it comes to relationships. We are inviting you to extend your ability to endure, not in a martyr-like way or a suffering way, but in a way that you can be a little bit more intentional and deliberate. You might see it like a game where you're getting the feedback and you're saying, okay, I'm going to take this feedback in. What can I do to shift or move that in the field and then put it back in the field and, and then what I desire pops up out of it, right? If the soil is not conducive to the growth of what you are wanting to manifest, do you walk away from that plot of land? Well, obviously, sometimes, yes, you do. Sometimes, yes. Okay? And you know how you'll feel that? Let me tell you. Your body. You will not feel that in your body unless you are present in your body. However, and for that reason, what I said just a moment ago about experiencing full presence and embodiment is so key. We are being invited and reminded to turn inward when it comes to making decisions. And I personally, as a light worker, someone who does sessions in a psychic way, Akashic readings, et cetera, et cetera, where I receive feedback from the collective through these one-on-one sessions because I'm able to see a little bit and gauge a little bit where the collective is with regards to like empowerment, sovereignty, and how they're feeling. And I, I'm expecting and setting the intention to experience a shift in the, in the questions that come in and then in the, in the tone where people are coming in and understanding that it's less about asking someone outside themselves exact directions and it's more like formulating something and then just allowing that person they're having the session with to reflect back the wisdom in that it's it's a little bit of like a witnessing experience so I want you to think about your intentions when you have one-on-one sessions with anybody I'm not currently doing Akashic readings now but If I were to be, if you were going to have a session with, say, me or someone else, think about how you go into any one-on-one experience. And we are shifting from just saying, oh, I'm open to whoever wants to come in. That's very feminine and that's not a bad thing. So don't think, oh my gosh, I've done that before. I'm bad. No, 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 no. It's not what I'm saying. We're just maturing. We're maturing. And if you are setting the intention, and of course it all boils down to intention, but if you are setting the intention that when you step into a one-on-one experience, that you are allowing the person that's sitting across from you to simply reflect back to you your own wisdom and your higher self, then you're coming out of it feeling empowered. And it's this, the power of being witnessed and the power of this idea of being validated and reflected right and you will determine that it does somewhat depend on the person across from you to some degree but again whenever you choose to do anything on your spiritual journey in your life you are taking that time to sit with your body and feel in your body the the frequency coming in and they're going one level deeper now i'm going to i'm going to expand on what i'm saying here so stay with me let me do a little light language pause let's talk about receiving quantum feedback frequency feedback 
because you're using your body as a receiver in in every moment of every day. If you choose, you're doing it consciously and unconsciously, but we're talking about the conscious way of doing that. Let's say you receive feedback, back to what they were saying, feedback that is whatever is around you, either a person, an opportunity, whatever it is, is not feeling harmonized with your body. Again, do we walk away? Do we walk away? Or do we feel an option there open to us? Okay, great. So I'm feeling this. What are my options? Because we're not in duality anymore. We're not in it's black or white anymore. It's like, wow, what what can I do with the ingredients in these frequencies to blend them in a way that does feel harmonized for my body? Maybe you need to slow down that feedback. Maybe you need to take it a little slower. Maybe you need to support that feedback, that frequency, that situation, that relationship, that environment with some other frequency weave them together and then it's like alchemy and that particular thing will be harmonized with you so again this goes back to the idea that we don't need to be impulsive if something doesn't immediately resonate and i will tell you i have a really strong feeling why they're telling us this because in order for us to navigate the next five to 10 years in co-creating in some semblance of a council structure, co-creating, collaborating, either in the physical or non-physical realms, it might be a little sticky or tricky or sluggish to harmonize it first. As we converge, as we, how do I say this? As we up level our ability to converge into the frequency of unity consciousness. Now, one last thing I'm going to share, and then I will close out today, is that a key to all of this is being comfortable in zero point energy in the feeling of zero point energy. We are being invited to get to know it, to understand how it works, how that field, let's call it a field, how it works to the level that we're able to in our human existence right now. Like your Arcturian self has it down. Your Arcturian self knows all about zero point energy and how to use it and all those things, right? We're talking about your human, your human And you may need to access your Arcturian self to better understand it. You may need to access your Andromedan self or another part of you, another aspect of your soul, your higher self, right? To better understand zero point energy. But I am hearing it is one of the keys to unity consciousness. And so that's sort of the final way to wrap this up and tie tie it with a bow. But I really, really appreciate you being here in this space. You can feel it as a space. And I've invited you to to be here with me and with gratitude and love. And I feel you here witnessing, reflecting, bringing your all into this co-creation. Magic is happening here on this podcast because what you are feeling as a microcosm of the macrocosm is a convergence even within the space of this digital audio (laughs) in between and woven through this podcast episode, this recording, you are potentially, I am feeling a a convergence happening as a, as a, I would say like a witness or an example, a model. It's a template that's coming into the podcast. That's what it is. And it's a template coming into a lot of spaces and places in our current plane of existence. These templates are being downloaded if we choose to receive them. And they are a precursor, as it were, a preparation for the full templates, the (laughs) full-blown, the full expression 
of unity consciousness on the planet. So thank you for being here to hold space for this. And I'd like to finish with a little bit more light language. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friends. I am sending you so much love and reminding you that I am you and you are me and we are we. Until next time.